In this instructional video, I'll be showing you how to unpack and assemble the relay hub. It comes with an instruction booklet. It comes with fasteners to put the relay hub into its bracket. And of course, with a little bit of protection around it. This is how the board comes out of the packaging. We now have to put this board into the bracket so that we can then mount it. This is how you receive the bracket. It has still got... Okay, start with this is how you and action. How do you call the shit that's on there? The, it's still got foil on it? Protective uh, protect, layer? Protective plastic Yeah. Wrap. Protective pr plastic wrap. Go. Uh, pr this is the bracket for the Egan Relay Hub and it comes with a protective layer on it to take it out of the box or oh, it's wrapping this is on there just for protection so when you receive it the first thing you have to do is take the allen keys out so that you can get the cover off the bracket and now the fun part peeling off the protective layer. This bracket is made out of stainless steel for strength and also to make sure that it does not corrode. It protects, it me mechanically protects the relay hub in it and it makes it really easy to run cables to it because the cables can run in from the side being fastened into the relay hub and then you can put a cable tie around here pull it tight and that creates a pull relief for the cable so the connection hasn't got any stress on it and the cable doesn't break over time with vibrations. Once you've peeled the protective layer off you find that there are different size holes in the relay hub bracket. The small holes are to mount the circuit board into the bracket. The bigger holes are to mount the bracket to a surface sort of like that and put screws through it. There's multiple holes in here. You don't have to use all of them. We've just put multiple ones in just in case only these ones work for you or only the outside ones. Four should be plenty to mount this bracket. To mount the circuit board into its bracket, you'll have to put these little fastening nuts in there and they will sit on one of these holes and then a screw will go through from the back screw into it holding this nut into place and then later on you put the circuit board on the top and put another screw into this and that will hold the circuit board this is what that looks like you will put through one of these screws hold it put the nut on there and then use the screwdriver to fasten it from the back. You can use a tiny spanner or a little shifter to hold this even tighter to nip them up properly. This is what it looks like when all the nuts have been inserted. The rear looks like this. There are so many nuts in the middle here because there is two nuts per relay base because the relays are being pushed in and pulled back out. It's important to put all of them in to prevent flexing of the circuit board itself and cracking while you put in and, out and pull out the relays. There's also nuts in every corner. It is quite tight to put them in. The reason for it is we've tried to make this as small as possible because space is always of the essence and there's never enough of it. To slide the circuit board into the bracket, you have to make sure that this big connector goes where these holes are on the top here. You see how the left-hand side and the right-hand side of the bracket are different. You slide it in from the side and you can lay it on its back and all the holes should line up. From here on, you can now put all the screws into the circuit board. Make sure you do not tighten the screws straight away. 
just put them in and leave them loose so the board can still move a little bit. Once all the screws are in, you can then go around and tighten them all. Once you put all the screws in, this should look exactly like this. And my favorite part of every Egan installation, peeling off the wrapper of the cover. Mm. Last thing to do now is to put the cover on with the four screws that you've taken out before. It's very important to make sure you just put these hand tight. Just very slight nip because otherwise you're going to crack the cover. This is what the assembled product looks like once you've put the circuit board in and put the cover back on. There's one thing you have to keep in mind that before you put the circuit board in and before you put the cover on, you do want to mount the bracket to wherever you want to have it. Because right now, these holes are not accessible anymore. So make sure you mount this, then you put the circuit board in, then you put the cover on. And that's it. That's the whole assembly and the unboxing of the product. In the next video, I'll explain the basic layout of the circuit board and what is what on the circuit board.